What's up everyone? So today's video is going to be all about Anki. Specifically, it's going to be a five minute Anki challenge in pediatrics where I do a bunch of Anki cars that I've made about pediatrics. Hopefully, I hope to share things with you about pediatrics and you'll learn something. But more importantly, you'll also learn about how I make Anki cards and ultimately how to all optimally use Anki uh, and the types of questions you want to be asking yourself. I hope you find it useful. Before I move further, I want you to know that this video is sponsored by Nerdcore Medical. They've actually put out a new thing recently. It's a Kickstarter and it's about this book that teaches little kiddos about the blood system. Specifically, it's about a red blood cell and the journeys he makes throughout the, the body. And I think it's actually really cool. I'll link the Kickstarter right here, but it has some really great stuff. It's already been fully funded, but if you wanna check it out, for every book that you buy, they also donate a book to a hospital so it can help kiddos in the hospital and give them something to kind of destigmatize the, uh, the fear that goes behind um, you know, blood and you know taking out blood and whatnot. So I um, hope you enjoyed this video and also major shout outs to uh, Nerdcore Medical because they always do amazing things like this and I'm so happy to be a part of their team. All right, let's get to it. So I'm out and about studying right now, but I figured I would explain this. What I'm gonna do is just do Anki for literally five minutes in front of you. And specifically the topic is gonna to be about pediatrics and I will hope to explain the reasoning behind why I made some of the cards, what they will teach you about uh, pediatrics. I hope to do this again and again for all the different subjects in med school because I think there's a lot of cool stuff I learned and I would love to share it with you guys. So that's how this is gonna go down. Let's do it. All right, welcome to the small screen and welcome to my Anki. So as I said, today we're gonna deal with my pediatrics rotation. And so my pediatrics rotation is the one that I just finished and I just started internal medicine now, which is why you see week one of internal medicine here. But it, within general pediatrics, I actually had, um, I think we should be hopefully, um, about six weeks. So you'll see that first, first through second of my three weeks was spent inpatient and my first three weeks were in pediatric urology. So now let's just do some questions from this so you guys can get a glimpse into pediatrics and also see how I make some of my Anki cards. I'm gonna put a timer here. I'm not gonna put it on the screen because I just think it would be constricting uh, because it might just make people feel like we're going for time when in reality, I just wanna share um, what I've learned in pediatrics uh, and kind of explain some of the cards. Um, so as you'll see, I'm gonna just press study now and you'll see that there's a couple cards here. I've matured 50% of them. There's a total of 500 in here, and I still have about 50% that are not mature, which means I'm still learning them. Okay, so this is describing what are two elemental formulas. So the elemental formulas, types of uh, formulas that babies get, um, if they're not drinking breast milk, elemental formulas are those that have no proteins and only amino acids, as it shows you here, because sometimes babies can't digest full proteins, so they need elemental formulas, which have uh, proteins broken down into amino acids. So I kind of described that here, just so I would have a context for it. And I know the answer here is Elicare and Nuyoshore, and I think there might be another one called Pure Amino. There's a total of three. And you'll see right here. So there's Elicare. Oh, Neosure is not right, but there's Elicare and Pure Amino. So those are three types of elemental formulas. And you'll also see I attached uh, the picture from the class where I learned this. Um, as I said, most of my cards are pretty intensive and there's enough information here uh, for me to learn everything. And as you also see, I also included a nice uh, pure element to care for our neonate. So you'll see pure element is referring to the pure element is referring to the Elicare. So you'll see that I just have mnemonics here and there. What is the insulin correction factor? So the insulin correction factor is a factor because for every unit of insulin you give a patient, you actually bring their glucose down by a certain amount. For every patient, it's different. So you usually have to calculate it. But basically, the insulin correction factor is saying, how much insulin do I need to give to bring the sugar down by an X amount? So you'll see here, the amount of glu decrease in glucose that one unit of insulin will do. And you'll see I also included a nice tidbit here of where I found this on the internet. What is the most common cause of congenital hypo hypothyroidism? So this is basically saying when babies are born, sometimes they have hypothyroidism, which means their thyroid isn't working as well. So they often have decreased metabolism and an increase in their TSH. So the most, most common cause is basically thyroid dysplasia, or I mean, I think it might be like thyroid dysgenesis, which means the thyroid just does not form appropriately. Um, and you see right here that it says right here, and I actually got this question from, uh, I actually got this question from Kaplan. Well, I didn't get this question from Kaplan. I did a Kaplan question and I learned about congenital hypothyroidism. And so I had to include the recap from that question here. And you also see that this is made from a pre-made deck and I it has a lot more stuff about congenital hypothyroidism here. All right, great. 
This is saying, what is a UA with reflex as a test? One thing you're gonna learn in the hospital is there's so many tests that you have to know that I actually make my own Anki cards to learn about the tests. So sometimes um, my, my resident will be like, we're gonna send off a UA with reflux. And I was like, what is a UA with reflux? And he told me about it. And so I was like, okay, now I wanna make sure I remember this. So I made this card. A UA with reflux is basically a urinalysis where they check your urine and see if there's any white blood cells in there, if there's any bacteria. And if there is, then they end up doing a urine culture. So a UA with reflex is basically they do a urinalysis, which means they analyze the urine. And if there's anything funky going on there, then, then they culture it. So you'll see, it means that they will only culture a ur they will they will only culture the urinalysis if the urinalysis is positive. Uh, and the point here is never order usually a UA with reflex because sometimes they only culture it if the urine is positive. The thing my resident told me is, is you always want to order a urinalysis and a urine culture because sometimes the culture will come back positive even if the urinalysis does not because some infections um, are very, very subtle. So it says right here, never order a urinalysis without a urine culture because if the urinalysis is negative and the urine culture is positive, we still treat based on the culture. So the point being here, this is not only a clinical uh, pearl that I learned from my resident, but this is also something where I'm showing you guys how I make flashcards based on what I learned in the hospital. So if you have a fever in a baby that's less than 28 days old, what are three bacterial conditions you might be worried about? And again, this is more for my critical thinking. This was actually a uh, exercise we did in my pediatric inpatient rotation where we had a fever in a baby that was less than 28 days old. And my resident was like, what are conditions you might be concerned about? And the answer here is pneumonia, UTI or pyelonephritis, urinary tract infection, or meningitis. Those three are very, very important to catch in babies because those can be fatal and you do not want a baby to have to deal with any of them. So you'll see right here, pyelonephritis, meningitis, and pneumonia are three conditions that you might want to be worried about. And as you said, as I showed you guys, we actually did a differential of this in my rotation. So I took a picture of it and, and added it into my Anki card because now I know exactly what I'm thinking about. And you'll see right here, fever, bacterial, viral, we broke it down into different things. Um, and so that's that. What does PMD mean in an abbreviation of pediatric note? Whenever you go into medicine, you're going to start looking at notes. People are going to write notes and you're going to realize that everyone has abbreviations for everything. And it's actually really annoying because you actually have to learn all the abbreviations or you can't even understand the note. So I have a whole section of my Anki dedicated to abbreviations. Uh, and so in this one, I don't actually remember PMD. Oh, primary medical provider is basically what it is. Primary MD. Uh, and the abbreviation here is basically the same as PCP. But when I was in pediatrics, everyone kept saying PMD so often that I'd be like, what the hell is a PMD? And they're like, oh, it just means like primary care provider. And I was like, oh my God, this is so annoying. I never knew that. So I made flashcard for this. And one thing I'm going to point out because I have officially reached five minutes is that um, you'll see right here, I actually have a tag for all of these. So for any, any uh, flashcard where I kind of define uh, an abbreviation, I tag it with this clinical translations. Because now moving forward, there's so many abbreviations that I've learned that all of them have this tag. So I can actually go back and share this eventually, hopefully with you guys, about all these abbreviations you need to know <laughs> for medicine. And so this is not just this card. For every card I go through, I almost inevitably have some level of organization attached to it. So let me show you this one. What are two morphological blood disorders that can lead to indirect hyperbilirubia in infants? Um, spherocytosis and elliptocytosis, because what happens is when your blood cells are not the right shapes and they're shaped as spheres or elliptocytes, the spleen degrades them and that increases your bilirubin levels and that leads to hyperbilirubinemia. And so that's why it shows you here spherocytosis and elliptocytosis. Um, and but you also see if I edit this I also have a tag on this card as well and this card is specifically within pediatrics about indirect hyperbilirubinemia so if at any time in the future I want to come back to learning more about this all my cards have this tag so I can just go into my Anki and uh, factor by those cards um, so this hopefully gave you some insight into pediatrics it hopefully also gave you some insight into how I tag cards it gave you some insight into how to make cards when you're on clinical rotations or even in, in lecture um, and how I take pictures and I add them into cards um, and so ultimately I, I hope you found this helpful and learned a bit more about pediatrics and I actually love pediatrics and I hope you love it too and I'm just finishing up my studying outside today but I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you liked it drop a like, uh, comment about what specific specialty you want to learn more about, and we'll do that next time. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, share, subscribe, all the things, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.